Greetings folks. Today we're going to take a look at op amp based integrators. Yes, our circuits are going to do a little calculus for us. At one time, integrators and differentiators were the heart of something called an analog computer. We tend not to use those now, but there are still applications for these uh, systems. So here's our basic integrator. It relies on a capacitor. So we essentially have an inverting sort of amplifier, but in the RF position, there is a capacitor. So we have RI over here. There's VN. We have this capacitor C, and of course V out's over there. So we want to create uh, an expression to describe what's uh, what's going on here as far as V out and V in. Well, the first thing we would remember is like all inverting amplifiers, this point right here is a virtual ground, so all of Vn drops across to Ri, and that would create an input current. Right, so we can just say In must equal Vn over Ri. And of course that current, because the input current into the op amp is nil, that current will flow through the capacitor, producing a drop plus to minus like this. Now we know that a capacitor itself, right, the fundamental equation for a capacitor is that I is equal to C dV dt, or if you prefer, we can write that as dV dt equals I over C. Well, I in this case is the current that was coming in through uh, the capacitor here, right, from Vn. So we can then say that dvc dt must equal In over C. But we know that In is equal to Vn over Ri, so that just turns into Vn over Ri times C. We can also notice that the uh, capacitor voltage with this polarity plus to minus is, is the flip of the output. Because again, here's ground, so we, you know, we think of the output as going to ground out here. But this end is the minus, right? So it's from this point to ground, this point to ground, it's minus to plus. So in other words, the V out is the minus of VC. Or if you prefer, right? Minus V out is VC. V, uh, a minus VC is V out. Either way you want to look at that. But when we combine this up, we can then say that DV out DT would have to equal a negative 1 over RIC. I'm just pulling this out. DT, uh, excuse me, VN. Now, we take this, integrate it, and what we wind up with is V out is equal to a negative 1 over RIC times the integral of V and DT. Right, so this is our big equation describing what's going on. So basically, the output is simply a scaled and inverted integral of the input voltage. Bingo. Now, something to look for here. The uh, frequency response of this circuit looks like so. We have the open loop response, and it does something like this. The response of the integrator falls at 6 dB per octave. Think of this, again, as, a, as sort of a, an inverting amplifier, but now we have X sub C over Ri as the gain. As frequency goes up, X sub C gets smaller, right? and it's in perfect lockstep. 
you double the frequency, you have the value of x sub c. So the gain falls at the same exact rate. In other words, we have a gain that also falls at 6 dB per octave. It goes like this. So it basically parallels the open loop response. Now, that can be a problem because at really, really low frequencies at DC, we basically have open loop gain. And we're going to need to limit this, right? Because otherwise, even very small DC values in here are going to send this thing off into saturation. So we typically add a resistor to limit the low frequency gain right here. And I'm going to call that our F. Okay, now that will have an impact on this response. RF and C are going to create uh, a critical frequency, which is going to limit the low frequency gain, but also stop the integration. And that frequency we call F low. Right? It's the lowest frequency. F low is simply equal to 1 over 2 pi RF times C. Now I like to call this the 50% accurate point, or 50% inaccurate if you, if you prefer. Um, that's a, just a very coarse term. The amplitude and the phase are both off um, by a sizable amount, 50%, 70%. It depends on which one you're looking at. But generally speaking, we want to operate above F low. If the input frequency, if your VN input frequency, if we're just talking about a simple sine wave here, um, if you're up by a decade, right? If you're up by one decade, then you're looking at like, you know, 99% accurate. So if F low was 100 hertz, you wouldn't expect super accurate uh, amplitude and phase from this equation if you had uh, 100 hertz input. But if you had a 1 kilohertz input, the accuracy of this equation will be spot on. It'd be really nice. Okay, so let's do um, an example. All right, so I'm going to uh, just build a little circuit right here. The first thing I'm going to say about this is um, there's sort of two ways of attacking these problems. One, if you have a simple sine wave, in which case we'll use an indefinite integral. And another, if you don't have a simple sine wave, you have a more complex wave, you know, square wave, triangle wave, something like that. In which case we'll use a definite integral, actually a series. All right, so let's make this uh, 5K up front here. I'm going to put in a 20 nanofarad cap here. And uh, our limiting resistor up top will be 100K. I'm going to say that um, our input is a 2 volt peak sign at 10 kilohertz. So 2 sign. 2 pi, 10,000, I'll just say 10k, t. That's our input. So the first thing we have to do is figure out F low, right? You know, if F low is 10 to 15 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, this is not going to work. You want to make sure F low is a lot lower than that. So 1 over 2 pi, RF times C, so that's the uh, 100k and the 20 nanofarad. And that works out to 79.6 hertz. So we're well, well above this, right? 10K is way, way, a couple of decades above this. So this equation should give us really good accuracy. All right, so our V out is this negative 1 over RC 
times the integral of v and dt. So I'm just going to start plugging in numbers. All right, so the ri is 5k. The capacitance is 20 nanofarads. Our vn 2 pi, oops, sorry, 2 sine 2 pi 10k. Okay, in general, just so that we have an idea of what the shape is going to look like, in general, if you integrate a sine wave, you're going to get a negative cosine wave. So you can just think of that as a sine wave that's been you know, shifted over like 90 degrees. What about the amplitude? All right, well, first off, we take this constant, right, the 1 over 5k times 20 nanofarads. That works out to 10,000. I can pull the 2 out over here. And then uh, taking the integral of the sine, um, the integral of uh, u sine u du is going to be uh, the negative cosine. So I need to uh, sort of adjust for that constant. So we pull out the uh, uh, 2 pi 10 k. And now we can combine up this, and that'll give us 318 mils, basically. That's times the negative cosine of 2 pi 10 k. Which ultimately turns into 0. 0.318 times the cosine of 2 pi 10k. So in other words, we have cosine out, we've got a 90 degree phase shift um, with an amplitude of 318 millivolts peak, right? Given our um, input of 2 volts peak at 10k. So you can see that, you know, we must be operating out here somewhere in the frequency response, right? Our F-flow over here 79.6 hertz, we're at 10 kilohertz, that's up here. So the signal, the peak amplitude is actually coming out below unity, right? We started with two, we're at 308, uh, 318 mils, right? And as I usually draw these, but just to be specific, that's zero dB right there. Okay? All right, now, that's what we do with um, a sine wave. What if I have a different waveform? You know, what if I have a square wave? Well, you could do an infinite series, right? There's nothing that says you can't do that. And you will come up with another infinite series. As a matter of fact, if you did that for a square wave, the new infinite series would actually describe uh, a triangle wave. And that's great if you know what the infinite series for a triangle wave is. You know, it's uh, the sines turn into cosines, unsurprisingly. Um, but if you don't know what that looks like, that is a little bit of a problem. Or maybe I have some other kind of complicated wave. So how do I attack that kind of issue? Well, for that, I suggest you do a piecewise linear approximation and use a definite integral. All right? So I'm just going to say use piecewise linear approximation. In other words, break it into straight line segments. And then on each one of those segments, you can do a definite integral. So I'm going to illustrate that with a square wave. So let's say we have a square wave as our input. And that's um, one volt peak to peak, nice round number, at one kilohertz. So what does that, you know, look like? Well, basically our waveform, you know, looks like this. 
and continues. So the um, I'll put the axes in here. All right, so that's uh, one volt peak to peak. So this is 0.5 volts up here, and you know minus 0.5 volts down there. Now it's one kilohertz. So one kilohertz would tell me that from here, like if we call this zero just for convenience, to here, one over one kilohertz is one millisecond. So this time, right, is half a millisecond. And what we're going to do is an analysis for this piece, straight line segment, an analysis for this piece, another straight line segment. The edge is, in this case, not going to present a problem for us. But, you know, if you had a triangle wave, you could, or some other kind of weird looking wave, you just break it up into these little straight line segments. All right, so um, basically what we do is we say for the time range, right, from 0 to 0.5 milliseconds, What is the input? Well, the input is whatever the peak value is. In other words, it's, it's a DC value. It hasn't changed. It's just half a volt. Okay. Bingo. So you can come in and do the computation here, right? For this piece. Uh, we've already figured out the 1 over RIC, right? We've already figured out that this works out to a negative 10K. So I'm just going to throw that in here since we already know what it is, um, times the integral of the input, which for this uh, this time period, in other words, from, from 0 up to half a millisecond, we know that's just 0.5. Right? Done. It's a, it's a constant. So you can pull that constant out, and then you just have the integral of dt. Right? Isn't that easy? So V out will work out to a negative 5,000, right, 0.5 times the 10K. A negative 5,000 integral of dt is just t, and you evaluate that from 0 to half a millisecond. And when you do your V out, and I, <clears throat> I have to be a little careful about this, it's actually the change in V out, but the value that you get out of this computation is a negative two and a half volts. This represents a peak to peak change. It represents the change from here to here. So it's, you're saying it, wherever it was, it went down a negative 2.5 volts. I'm going to draw this big so you can see it. Hey, it looks like it's time for a new black pen. So I'm going to lightly draw in my square wave here, which with this pen is going to be easy now, and so forth. So what you're saying is that that's half a volt peak, right? So you're saying this thing has a negative two and a half volt change, and it's a constant, it's a constant rate of change, right? So if you think of this straight line, and when you integrate that, you're just going to get this straight constant, you know, the area under the curve is increasing at a constant rate. Of course, don't forget this is an inverting thing. So even though this is positive, we're going to get a negative rate of change out here. So we're just saying that that total change in half a cycle is two and a half volts. So that represents the peak to peak change in the signal. So what we're seeing out here, put some little construction lines. is this. I can't quite draw this to scale. But this, from here to here, is two and a half volts. In other words, it's one and a quarter volts peak. Right? So this is half a volt. This should be one and a quarter volts. And then when it goes negative, just redo this, but now your Vn is negative 0.5, so you get a negative, negative, positive. And you get a positive two and a half volt change. And it comes up like this. And then it just repeats. So you integrate a square wave and you get a triangle wave. Right? At least this way, using the, the definite integral, you have an idea of what it looks like. 
right? Otherwise, like I said, you're going to come up with this um, uh, infinite series of sine waves that turns into an in infinite series of cosine waves. Um, do you know what that looks like on a scope? Well, not necessarily, right? So this is another technique that you can use. But there you go. There's a circuit that will integrate your signals for you. Useful little thing.